The Su-25 provides some heavy close air support firepower to the Soviet air tree in War Thunder. Let's check out this powerful strike jet. In the late 1960s, Soviet military planners recognized the need for a dedicated close air support strike jet purpose-built for the role as the existing aircraft they had serving in that function were all high-speed tactical bombers and weren't especially well-suited for loitering over an active battlefield, providing accurate fire on tanks and moving ground targets. From the start, the Su-25 was to be, primarily, a heavily armored and largely conventional aircraft, focused on firepower rather than performance. Experience in the Second World War, which was, remember, a very different battlefield for the Soviets than it was for the Western Allies, had shown the virtue of a simple and reliable close air support aircraft, even if the plane itself wasn't revolutionary. An emphasis was placed on a sophisticated attack system, a heavy weapons load, durability, and armor. In fact, the Su-25 is currently the last fully armored combat aircraft produced anywhere in the world. The design and the development was mostly trouble-free, beating out a competing aircraft from Illusion, with production starting in 1978. The initial testing phase ironed out most of the issues with the basic design, and regular frontline service started in 1981. The Su-25 was used extensively during the Soviet war in Afghanistan, where it demonstrated its resilience being able to survive sustained hits from small caliber arms fire and was occasionally able to survive direct hits from shoulder launched stinger missiles, though normally a missile hit would be enough to take it down. The Su-25 also saw extensive combat during the Iran-Iraq war as well as many other low intensity conflicts around the world. The plane remains in service today with about 20 different countries and it's gained a very favorable reputation as being dependable, tough, and able to maintain a very high operational tempo capable of flying over 10 missions a day. What we get in War Thunder are two versions of the plane, the basic Su-25 in the tech tree and the Su-25K premium vehicle. The K was an export model of the plane. Both are strike aircraft in rank six with a battle rating of 9.7. The two versions are almost identical in the game, and what I'm presenting here applies largely to both of them. The primary difference is that the Tech Tree version gets more countermeasures and has a significantly higher repair cost. The plane gets a full ballistics computer, including a laser target designator. It has the custom loadout editor, and it can take a pretty large variety of gun pods, unguided rockets, dumb bombs, and guided air-to-ground missiles. For air-to-air -air weapons, the Su-25 gets the R-60. This is a high-performance, short-range dogfight missile that locks pretty easily, but is vulnerable to flares. The basic R-60 is a rear-aspect heat seeker, while the R-60M and MK models have all-aspect capability. For air-to-ground weapons, the Su-25 gets a variety of laser-guided missiles. First is the S-25L. This is a pretty basic weapon with medium speed and a medium warhead. It can also take two versions of the KH-25, with the ML version having a better range. The KH-25 is a favorite of many players, and the Su-25 can take four of them in addition to other weapons. It has a good warhead, and it can pop even the heaviest targets on a direct hit. The big dog is the KH-29L. It has slightly less range and is a little slower than the KH-25ML, but it packs an enormous warhead that can blow up medium targets even on a near miss. And generally, this is the heaviest, hard-hitting guided weapon that you can take. In terms of flight performance, the Su-25 is big, heavy, armored, and it kind of flies like a boat. The acceleration is good, but it has a surprisingly low wing rip speed for such a tough aircraft, and you'll want to keep your speed below about 0.85 Mach in order to stay safe. 
if you have to go into a dive from high altitude, and you'll be doing that quite a lot, you want to cut your throttle and deploy the air brakes. My first few times lining up a ground strike with this jet, I found myself ripping the wings off really quickly, which was quite a surprise. Now the Su-25 has reasonable engine power, but no afterburners, and its acceleration is pretty good once you get off the ground. The rate of climb is about average for a big, heavy, non-afterburning jet, and as always, taking a big weapons load is going to degrade all of the performance. The agility of the plane isn't great, remembering that this is an armored strike jet with a lot of weight and conventional tail surfaces. This absolutely is not a dogfighter, and it can get energy trapped really bad in vertical maneuvers. Under 400 kilometers an hour, the turn performance is just awful. But at higher speeds, you can usually get one good energy turn with the combat flaps before turning into a brick. Now, speaking of combat flaps, you can deploy them at basically any speed, which can be a big help if you need a little extra lift pulling out of a dive. Now, <clears throat> there's a lot to talk about in terms of flying this jet out into combat. First, in air battles, the Su-25 is a bomb truck, plain and simple. The laser-guided missiles aren't especially useful since you really get almost no points for picking off individual tanks, and against AI targets, the enormous supply of unguided rockets is probably a better bet, or you can just go with the dumb bombs. If you're attacking bases, again, dumb bombs. For air combat, well, this isn't really what the Su-25 is built for. But if you fly out with the gun pods and the R-60s, you might be able to get a couple of kills. The real home for this jet is, of course, flying close air support. The first thing I want to say is that all of the weapons on this thing, except for the napalm, are completely viable in close air support. The unguided rockets can get you kills, the laser-guided missiles can get you kills, the bombs can get you kills, and even the gun pods can get you kills. So, even if you don't have enough spawn points to go for a top-end loadout, don't ignore the chance to take this thing out with a more basic weapons load. If you're using the dumb bombs or the unguided rockets, you get a CCIP for both, which makes it quite a bit easier to line up shots. The quantity of rocket pods the Su-25 can take give you an enormous amount of scoring potential if you can stay alive long enough to make four or five passes over the battlefield. As always, though, if you're using any of the unguided munitions, you're going to have to get close in order to be accurate. And even at this BR, there will be credible SPAA to contend with, so watch for incoming fire. Now, for making attacks with the laser-guided missiles, the first caveat is that there's almost no optical zoom on the laser sight. That's not great. And it makes getting accurate hits from long distance kind of difficult, especially against a moving target. No auto tracker, so you gotta aim the laser manually, which can be a chore, but it also gives you the chance to redirect the weapon after launch if your original target ducks into cover or gets blown up. Now, there are two main attack profiles, and in my opinion, neither one is right or wrong, but I'm sure there's gonna be comments insisting one or the other is the only true way to use these missiles. If you fly directly in at the target, you can use the laser targeting view to adjust the point of aim as you fly in, and then pull off after impact at the last second. Or, you can set your point of aim, either from the laser designator or the external view, fire, and then veer off to avoid incoming fire. It's safer to veer off after firing, and the laser will continue to track over a pretty wide field of view below and behind the plane, but you can get more accurate updated shots if you fly in with the laser targeting view. So, pick your poison. Visually, the Su-25 is a pretty badass looking plane. It's just covered in weapons, and it's obvious just from looking at it that this thing was built for combat. Both versions get a good selection of custom paint jobs, so whichever one you're using, it won't be hard to find something you like. Landing is pretty easy. You can drop gear and flaps around 400 kilometers an hour, and the plane has a double landing chute which helps cut the landing run down. 
Also, the plane is pretty tough, and if you have to do a belly landing, the Su-25 can survive that a bit easier than a lot of other jets. Now, the cockpit is amazingly detailed, and it has a radar warning receiver right where I like it. But again, Gaijin just can't figure out how to make the Soviet ones work inside the cockpit view. The visibility is pretty bad, but this was built for pilot safety, not for dogfighting. An important note, the target display on the HUD is actually your laser designator, and you can use it to set a targeting point for your laser-guided missiles from inside the cockpit view using the normal keybinds, and it'll keep lasing the target even if you turn off, so don't forget about that. To close out on the Su-25, this plane has a comprehensive air-to-ground weapon system with an enormous selection of very effective weapons. It's got heavy-hitting laser-guided missiles. It can take a pair of all-aspect R-60 missiles. It carries a good supply of countermeasures. And it's heavily armored and can often survive a significant amount of damage. However, the laser designator has a really crappy optical zoom. It lumbers around pretty badly in air combat. It's got a really low wing rip speed, and the Tech Tree version has a pretty steep repair cost. The final verdict on the Sukhoi Su-25 is that in air battles, this plane could be an effective grinder for people who like the ground-pounding strike jet sort of a playstyle, but it'll never be king of the dogfighters at its BR. In ground battles, I think the premium one is going to be very popular paired with the T-72 terms, and along with the A-10-XM1 combo, is going to have some really long-term ramifications for the ground battle's close air support meta. This is a very effective strike jet, and it's going to do a lot of damage out on the battlefield. As always, thanks for watching.